Hello, our church family and friends. I am so thankful that you have joined us today. We're continuing our series called The Battle. And today we're going to get in the subject of the principle of the fast. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you again for joining us. If you're in southern Wisconsin, we would invite you to make our church your church. Our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin. If you're too far away to join us in person, please continue to join us online. We love that you're a part. We want you to get plugged in. This series we've called The Battle. I've called it this because the church is facing a battle worldwide like we haven't had to face in a long time. There are definitely areas that have faced battles. that The church has been persecuted like China, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, these places, the church has had to go underground in Afghanistan. All of a sudden, overnight, they can't meet in public. And so we need to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters. But there is a battle that is happening in the first world countries like America, like in Canada, places like this, we are seeing the church have to fight at a greater level than we have ever had to fight, at least in my lifetime, and for sure in the last 50 years. But we will not win this battle unless there are some principles we have on the inside of us. And we're look, going to look through this series at different principles. But today we're looking at the principle of fasting. Maybe this is a subject that you've had in your mind what is fasting? Uh, how do we fast? Or maybe you grew up in a church that fast but never understood the complete aspect of why we fast. Fasting is a powerful tool and we're going to look at it today. So turn with me to Daniel chapter 10 and we're going to look at verse 2 here. And we'll start here. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came uh, flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, this uh, a lot of times is referred to as the Daniel fast. And the Daniel fast, as we read here, is simply no sweet, no meat. Uh, and so he stayed away from things that were sweet and he stayed away from any kinds of meat. And he did this for 21 days. All right, let's turn to Acts chapter uh, 13, or you can look them up later, or they'll be on the screen here. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. And again, I'm going to read scriptures. I feel like I've, the last couple weeks I've been doing nothing but reading scriptures to you. But Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, uh, Bartimaeus and Saul, for, uh, uh, for the work unto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Now, this is the first time that the Holy Spirit spoke to the church about sending missionaries. This event right here, this event that happened is the whole reason we're in churches around the world today. This was the key to sending off and kicking off missions spreading around the world. And they fasted and then laid hands on them, praying for them. Let's look at, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. You go to Matthew 6 if you're going to join me in Scripture here. But I'm going to look and read to you first Acts chapter 14 and verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they connected them, or excuse me, commanded them to the Lord on whom they believed. Now look at here. They prayed and fasted. When you fast... Uh, if you need to pray. When you're, when you're fasting unto the Lord, prayer is connected to that. It is about pressing into the Lord. If you don't connect with God during fasting, you just were on a diet. So prayer and fasting go hand in hand. There is no fasting unto the Lord without pressing into Him. And that we do by prayer and supplications and fasting. We put it all together. Fasting and prayer go hand in hand. All right, Matthew chapter 6. Now, I, I do want to look at this. The, the Bible nowhere uh, orders us to fast. Never tells us to do so. Uh, and there, if, if this is the case, if the Bible never orders us to fast, then why 
do we do it? And the Bible also gives us a great scripture. Uh, Obedience is better than sacrifice. I used to quote that a lot when it came to fasting because I did not want to fast. But let's look at Matthew. We're going to look at the benefits of fasting today. We're going to get through them all. But Matthew chapter 6, 16 says, Moreover, when ye fast, now notice right here, it doesn't say if. Jesus was speaking. It says when you fast. Jesus had the mentality that his disciples would fast. Not might fast, but that they would fast. It's just like when he talked about prayer. When ye pray, pray like this. And then he tells them how to pray. It, he didn't. There, we don't see a command for them to fast, but Jesus was expecting that his disciples would fast and pray. So let's look here. Moreover, uh, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, they have their reward. Verse 17, but thou when, not if, but when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy face, and thou appear unto men to fast but unto God which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. Now look, um, fasting is not something we, you know, we go out to do as a religious thing. We don't do it publicly to say, look how good we are, look how we're following the Lord, uh, and take it as a prideful thing. I fast and you don't kind of deal. That is not what fasting is. You know, before we jump into fasting, let's talk about what it's not before we talk about what it is. Uh, fasting is not uh, of getting you in a better relationship with God. Fasting does not help your relationship with God as, let me put it this way, as putting your position in a better position. Fasting does not put you in a better position with God. Why? You're in the greatest position with God that you could possibly be. When you give your life to Jesus, when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you are a child of God and there is no better position with Him. You can't have one. Fasting does not help that position with God at all. Fasting does not make God do something for you. That's something else I want to... Giving to God... Uh, tithing and offering doesn't make God do anything for you. And fasting does not get God up to do something for you. Fasting also does not make God feel sorry for you. Oh, look at them at what they're going through. Uh, if they can teach God, you know, I can see God talking to Jesus. Jesus, we, we got to do something. They're, they're fasting. I want them to eat. They're so hungry. Let's do something. That's not how fasting works. Fasting does not make God feel sorry for you that he does something for you. God, uh, fasting does not increase God's love for you. That Absolutely not. And fasting in no way pays for your sin. Some people have had the mentality that we need to go through hard things and bad times to pay for our sins. Jesus paid for your sins on the cross, my friend. And if that's not enough, nothing is. There's nothing you can do on your own to get forgiveness of sin. It was the price that was paid by Jesus Christ himself. Now, I am trying to make sure I got so much information I want to go through and I don't want to take too terribly long here to get through it. So we're going to look at three parts here of fasting, three subjects here. And my first one is fat, fasting will strengthen your body. Uh, now our body is, we're, we're a three-part being, mind, soul, and body, right? Mind, soul, and this flesh. And so we want to get into here. But fasting will strengthen your body and you know what? We need you. We need you to be strong. We need you healthy. We need you in the right place. We need you in the body of Christ. For us to do what we need to do, I need you. I need you praying. I need you going to church. I need you in, uh, encouraging the brethren and sharing your testimony. I need you in the body of Christ. The kingdom of God needs you. We live in this body and we must take care of it. Now, I see... 
two things that seem to happen here either in that we seem to do in the body of Christ when it comes to fasting with the body. Let's just let's just talk about the body period. A lot of times the church either puts no emphasis on this flesh, none whatsoever, and then sometimes we tend to put too much emphasis on the flesh. You got to work we either go to one ditch or the other where you got to work out like nonstop and you got to take care of this body or ah oh, you know, you, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you, we don't need to put that. We need to put so much emphasis on the spirit and how we live. Can I tell you something? This body, we live in this earth suit. Without this earth suit, we are no longer here. Uh, we need to take care of this body. I need you to live a long time. To fulfill all that God has called you to do, I need you to take care of this flesh suit so that you can live and not die and proclaim the works of the Lord. Now, and we'll talk about some spiritual reasons that happen here first, but let's talk about this one first. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 27. There are natural benefits to fasting. There are natural things that we can do uh, to our body, taking care of it, going for walks, uh, exercising that helps our body. And fasting helps your body a lot. Fasting also purifies your blood. I don't know if you know this. Uh, there was a period of time in my life where uh, I wasn't doing so well healthy and I began to press into the Lord. And one of the things I really felt he spoke to me was to purify my blood. Well, I didn't know how to purify the blood. I didn't know at all. So I googled it and this has been in the early 2000s. So I'm sure there's a lot more information online now about how to purify your blood and the best way to do it. But the two things I found in every article I read was fasting. Fasting purified the blood to help get rid of toxins and um, chlor chlorophyll form chlorophyll chlorophyll chlor something. Something that comes out of green leafy vegetables. That also helps purify the blood. All right, and so fasting will help your body. Uh, now, and I'll, I'll say this too, we've had, um, I've fasted, we've all fasted, a lot of people have fasted. One of the things that happens within the first day, two, three days is your body feels weak. You do feel weak. But can I remind you that the scripture says when we are weak, he is strong. And so it really causes us to rely on God. But fasting is good for the soul. It's good for the body. It's good for the spirit. It is good for you. Now, I will also say this. If you're thinking about fasting, if you have health issues, you need to consult with a doctor. Uh, I would say that when in all fasting, talk to your doctor uh, and take it. And so I know some people who can't fast, you know, like no food at all. They can't fast food 24 hours, but they can fast something. They can fast whether it's sweets, whether, whether it's a Daniel fast, no, uh, no meat, no sweets. Uh, they can fast something. Uh, and so I think it's important for us to fast. And we'll get into it. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now let's look at Daniel chapter 1 again, and we're going to go to verse 8 here. But notice that he says he puts his body under subjection. Okay, first uh, Daniel 1 and chapter 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Uh, therefore, he requested of the prince... Uh, now, look at here. Okay, so let me just give you some background here. They're forcing, Daniel has been taken into captivity. They're forcing a certain diet on Daniel. And Daniel fasts. He, we find that he fasted at the beginning of the year, and he fasted at the beginning of every month. Daniel is fasting here, and he's saying, I don't want to indulge uh, on, in this that uh, will defile me too much meat or too much sweets, too much of this. And he noticed this. And so he was going to fast and he is saying to the guy, hey, look, I give me 10 days. Let me do my fast. And if I'm weak, because this is what's going to happen, the guy who's responsible for making sure Daniel's healthy, if they don't, if he, if Daniel is not healthy, it is his problem. It is going to be a problem that he will have to answer for. And so he's trying to convince him, look, let me do my fast for 10 days. And if I am not in better shape than the rest of them, then we'll go back to your way. But let me do this. And so the guy says, I'll give you 10 days. I'll give you 10 days. Um, 
So let's look at verse 9. And now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince. And Okay, verse 10. And the prince uh, said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord, my king, and uh, the, the appointed your meat and drink, for why should you see your faces a worsening lichen? Okay, so basically here, the guy is saying, I fear the king. And if I don't do my job, it's my head, not yours. I'm responsible. I will have the punishment. Now let's go down to verse 14. It continues to say that uh, he, he's going to take 10 days here. And it's verse 14. And so he consented to them in this matter, proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Now, I do want to say something here. I looked up the word fatter, and I thought it was going to be a word for healthy, uh, a word for stronger, something like that, and it actually just means fat. <laughs> so Daniel gained more weight eating uh, his diet, the no meats, no sweets, than what the other people did. Now, I believe a lot of this was the hand of God on his life. He, he surrendered his life to God. He was fasting to honor the Lord, to strengthen his body, his mind, and his soul, to strengthen this flesh. And he was honoring God this way. And when he got into it, God honored him. All right. All right. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Ephesians 3 and 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, the inner person is your soul. Uh, and the voice translation actually translated that way. It says, Father, out of your uh, honorable and glorious riches, strengthen your people, fill their souls with your power of your spirit. All right. Now, look. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. How can fasting affect your mind? Well, let me say this here. I looked this up, brainfacts.org. It says, in the case of the brain, the cognitive function, learning, memory, and alertness are all increased by fasting. And if you Google it, uh, your mind and fasting, you will find that there are a lot of studies that show that your memory increases, that nerves actually are help created when it comes to memories and things of this nature. Your fasting actually helps sharpen your mental ability. Science backs that up. Fasting produces a protein known, known as BDNF. And it will affect not only your mind, but it will also affect your emotions. Now, how does this affect your emotions? It, it will help you. First of all, let me say this before we move on to emotions. Your memory, and it, and it, it helps the nerve cells in the hippocampus. Now, you can look all this up. Google it. There is a lot of information or whether you go DuckDuckGo or whatever browser you use, look it up. And there are so many studies on this. So how is going with food, out without food going to help our emotions and our, you know, our, our, our will? How is it going to affect our will and our emotions? Uh, my friend, it's when we press into God. It's not so much the fasting part that helps our emotions as much as it is Pressing into God. Now Leviticus chapter 16 in verse 29 says, And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls. Have you ever read that and wondered, afflict your souls? What does that mean? Now that word is the word ah na, And it means to humble oneself in the subject of fasting. They did this by fasting and the Amplified even, when you look it up in the Amplified, the Amplified says you shall humble yourself by fasting. So this word ana has the mentality, the indication that we're afflicting our flesh by fasting. James 10, or excuse me, 4 and 10 states this, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. One way to humble yourself is to press into God, and one way to do that is by fasting. 
Ezra 8 and 21 says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahav uh, that we might afflict. Now, this word afflict is the same word anah, which means to humble oneself by fasting. And so it says, well, we might afflict ourselves or humble ourselves by fasting uh, before God to seek of Him a right way for us and our little ones and for all our substance. What is he saying? We fasted for direction, the right way to go for us, the adults, leadership, all of that. We have fasted for our children, the right way for them, and we have fasted to seek you, God, on how to use everything we own, everything that you've given us, everything that you blessed us for. How are we to use it for the edification of the kingdom of God? They're looking for direction for themselves. They're looking for direction for their children, and they want to know how to use all of their stuff for the glorification, the edification of the kingdom of God. Okay, and so verse 23 here says, So we fasted and we besought our God for this, and He entreated us, or He answered us. Okay, so the third part is our will. Have you ever made the statement, I need more willpower? I need more willpower. I need willpower to get over this. One of the ways you can practice willpower is by denying yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit. And we do this in fasting. You want to strengthen your willpower. You want to strengthen your ability to make a decision and stick with it. You have something in your life that you lose to every time. I used to always say, I got a couple weaknesses. And normally it always tends to be the food that is my weaknesses. Uh, a pecan pie, that's a weakness for me. Ice cream, huge weakness for me. And key lime pie is a tremendous weakness for me as well. One of the ways that if we have a weakness in our life, something we're struggling with, uh, whether what, whatever it is, one of the ways to do it is by fasting. When we fast, we strengthen our ability to deny ourselves of whatever it is we find pleasure in that we know we need to let go of or we need to back away from. Some people I've heard say, I live a fasted lifestyle, that they're constantly fasting something. Uh, not a bad idea. So fasting affects, what, is, what did we say here? Fasting strengthens my body. Fasting strengthens my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. My last point, fasting strengthens my spirit. We're going to go to Isaiah 58. This is the greatest benefit out of it all. It will strengthen your body. It will cause you to uh, get rid of certain toxins in your body. It will purify the blood that flows through your body. It will help strengthen your memory. It will help strengthen your emotions. And it will help strengthen your will. And the greatest benefit out of them all is it will help strengthen your spirit. Now let's look here. Daniel understood this. This is the man that had the most accurate prophet, prophecies in the Old Testament by all means. And not only that, that he prophesied events, but he would prophesy times. He would say when the uh, temple is announced that it's going to be rebuilt, it will be rebuilt in 49 years, seven sevens. He said it will be rebuilt in 49 years. It was 49 years that the temple, from the announcement that it would be built, rebuilt, that it was rebuilt in 49 years. This man hit it on the head all the time. Now, why would Daniel do a fast for 21 days if there was no mandate, no law, that God said that he must do it? There's nothing in the Bible commanding him at this time to fast in any way, shape, or form. But when you fast, there is a denying of the flesh and a tuning in to the Spirit. When you, when you fast, your flesh kind of has to shut up and put up. It weakens the flesh. It calls the flesh to settle down and your spirit becomes fine-tuned. I'll tell you something else. Your, your senses will become fine-tuned. I remember there was one fast we, I was on and I decided to go to a movie. 
uh, theater. And that was a mistake. And let me tell you why. I, my senses were on top of things. <coughs> my senses were alert big time. I could smell the popcorn and man, did it smell good. All of a sudden, I'm watching a movie and I'm with someone and I just smell, and I, I turn to my mouth, I smell Twizzlers. And I look down and somebody is eating Twizzlers and they're probably uh, five to seven rows down. How in the world? That would have, I would have never probably even have noticed the smell of a Twizzler. But all of a sudden, because I'm fasting, my, my senses are alert. When you fast, the flesh begins to quiet down and you begin to tune in your spirit. We fast, we pray, we press into the things of God. Let's, like I said, Isaiah, we're turning to Isaiah 58 and we're going to start in verse 3. They said, why is it that when we fasted, you did not see it? We starved ourselves and you did not seem to notice. Because on the day you fasted, you were seeking your own desires. You continued to exploit your workers. Uh, during your fast, you quarrel and fight with others and strike them with an angry fist. And you fasted like that. Your voice will not be heard on high. Do you think I'm impressed with that kind of fast? Is it just a day to starve your bodies? Make others think that you are humble and lie down in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call that a fast? Do you think I, Yahweh, will be impressed with that? This is the kind of fast that I desire. Remove the heavy chains of the oppression. Stop exploiting your workers. Set free the crushed and the mistreated. Break off every yoke of bondage, share your food with the hungry, provide for the homeless and bring them into your home, clothe the naked, don't turn back your own flesh and blood, then my favor will bathe you in sunlight until you like the dawn bursting through the darkness and then suddenly healing will manifest you will see righteousness march out before you. The glory of Yahweh will protect you from all harm. And Yahweh will answer you when you pray. When you cry out for help, He will say, I am here. If you banish every form of oppression and scornful accusation and victorious slander, the reward of fasting is strength. Now, I read this out of the Passion Translation. forgot to tell you that before I started here. But I think the Passion Translation just makes it so plain here. The reward of fasting is strengthening your body. It, in the Bible's very clear. If you just fast without pressing into God, without repenting and turning from your sin, it's just a diet. And God says, do you think I like that? Do you think that just because you try to show yourself humble to others, if you do it for the benefit of getting accolades or praises from other people, if you get it for if you do if you do a fast and you treat people like crud, if you treat people horribly, do you think God appreciates that fast? Absolutely not. But he says if you humble yourself, if you fast, if you tune in to what God is doing, if your spirit becomes more alive to him, he says, I will strengthen your spirit. When you pray, I hear you. Get rid of slander conversations. Don't talk bad about your neighbor, your friends, your family. Help those in need. And God says, I will hear your prayers. I will answer them. I will heal your body. There's another scripture that comes to mind. Humble yourself. Repent. Humble yourself. Cry out. And the Lord will heal your land. If any time the church needs to fast, needs to humble ourselves and see healing in our land, today is that day, church. Today is the day that we need to fast to see the hand of God move, to humble ourselves, to tune in. Let me explain it this way. I like this. When right now in this church, in this building, in your home where you are listening to right now, 
There are radio waves, TV waves with an antenna. You can pick them up. Without an antenna, you can't see them. We got to have a, it's connected to something. You get a radio, you can turn it and tune into things. There are there are waves going through this world, going through your living room, going through the church, going through everywhere where you're driving, interstate, everywhere you are. There are radio waves. There's all kinds of waves going through that area. You just need something to be able to tune into it. God is speaking all the time. I like to think of it this way. God was always speaking. Daniel just tuned in to hear it. Prophets today, we still need them. You can still hear from God. But what does it take? Tuning in to hearing what God is saying. My friend, when we humble ourselves, when we fast, use a biblical term, afflict our bodies. Not by causing us pain, not by hurting ourselves, but by fasting. We tune in our spirit, quiet down the flesh, and we tune in our spirit, and we hear from God. Say this out loud. I hear from God. I am His child, and He speaks to me. My friend... We need to be hearing from the Lord. God speaks through His Word and God speaks to your spirit. The last scripture and I am done for today. 2 Corinthians in 12, it tells us, For when I am weak, then am I strong. I want to read this out of the Passion Translation. For my weakness becomes a portal for God's power. When we fast, we do weaken the flesh but we strengthen the body we open a portal for God to show himself strong I believe as you fast you will hear from God your spirit will tune into what God is doing but not only that you'll be able to see God is strengthening you it's supernatural because we don't just fast food we don't just not eat but we press into the things of God and I want to remind you if you're watching if you want to do a fast, there are medical reasons why some people cannot fast food. Well, maybe you can fast sweets. Maybe you can fast a cup of coffee. Maybe whatever it is, tea. Whatever it is you find yourself addicted to, like me, tea and coffee are big deals for me. Uh, maybe that's the fast you can do. Maybe you can do a Daniel fast. No meats, no sweets. Maybe you can do a absolute fasting all food. Maybe for a day. Maybe fast a meal. Maybe fast breakfast. For me, that wouldn't work because I don't really eat breakfast. But maybe fast a lunch. Maybe fast a dinner. Maybe fast all day. Maybe fast one meal. But what is it that we're going to fast to tune in our spirit? But this is it. It's not just a diet. But we press in to God. We pray. We seek His face. We spend time with Him. We worship Him. How about this? When you fast, turn on praise and worship music and worship the Lord. Praise God. My friend, before we ever are able to strengthen our spirit by fasting, the first thing you must do is give your life to Jesus. If that's you and you say, I have not confessed Jesus as my Savior, I want to give you a chance to do so today. The Bible says to be saved, we must confess Him and believe in our heart. Confess Him as our Savior and believe in our heart and we shall be saved. Not might be, but shall be. It's not about what you can do, how much money you can give, how long you can fast, any works that you can do. Not how good you are to the poor. But it comes down to, what did Christ do for you? And do you accept it? Do you confess Him? Do you believe? Maybe like the prodigal son, you confess Jesus as your Savior. Like the prodigal son, you walked away from the Father. Well, today is your day to come home. And so if that's you, you say, I want to come home today. Before we can fast or strengthen our spirit, we need to be right with the Lord. We need to get our life in right standing with God. So today, I want to say this prayer. If you say this prayer, you believe it with your heart, you will be saved. I want you to repeat after me if that's you. If you're in a household and there's other people, let's say it all together, just in case somebody wants to say it and they don't want to be left by themselves. Dear Heavenly Father, we confess Jesus is the Son of God. We believe in our heart. We have confessed with our mouth. So today, we know that we are saved. In Jesus' mighty name, 
Amen. My friends, I'm so thankful for you watching today. I hope this message blessed you. Our church, again, we're a non-denominational church. If you're looking for a church, we would invite you to make our church your church. If you live in southern Wisconsin, come be with us in person. If you live too far away, we would uh, encourage you to continue to join us online. It blesses me. Thank you for all your comments, your emails, and your phone calls. It is a blessing to hear from you. Uh, my friend, we are blessed, but most importantly, we're blessed to be a blessing. I will see you in person or online, but I will see you next week.